Oh man, all that copying and pasting is just horrible for carpal tunnel, right? But now, I've got the key version 2 macro pad. So let's crack it open. So there's a foam pad on top here. We've got a QR code for instructions on configuring the key V2. And we've got the USB cable. Looks like some screws, little rubber feet, and the keyboard itself. We gotta pry it out. Check that out. There we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the little plastic rubber feet and put them on here. So you can see right over here where that other foot goes. And now I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Now it does use a USB-C on the uh, plug end here. Plug that in, got a nice snug fit. And what's interesting is that I see this as red, but the color that you see looks more like orangish or yellow. So let me turn off the light in here and see if that makes any difference. Yeah, it's, it's really a bright red is what I see. Uh, I'll go ahead and post something on Instagram and I'll have a link down below for you if you wanna check that out. Now I'm curious to see if it does anything without installing any software, I'll just that nothing so here's notepad and if i press the first key it doesn't do anything i press c <laughs> it's actually typing the letter c and v does the letter v so coming over to the page that was listed on the qr code it redirects over to this page here and it looks like there is a keyboard firmware builder so it looks like that we need to download a json file so just right click and save link as Save that in my downloads, and it says we need to upload that. So I'll click on upload, select the file from my downloads. So coming back over to the instructions, it shows that we want to go over to key map. There we go. By default, the JSON file has the key map where the three keys are numbers one, two, and three. Select the leftmost key and click on the KC1 button, and it'll unfurl the functions you can bind your first key to. So after reading through the manual quite a bit, it uh, looks like that this is actually probably ready to use out of the box. This is where you would build your custom firmware for it and then come over and compile it, download the hex file. And if you made any changes, which you can actually check out the full list of everything here for all the various key codes that you can program this for, then you would have to download a open source utility from GitHub and the tool is called QMK. So you can download that and then follow these instructions to go ahead and customize this beyond its regular use. Now, from the stock firmware that it comes on it, it appears that this first key is essentially holding down the control key and then C is the letter C and V is the letter V. So if we go ahead and pull up Notepad here, let's just go ahead and copy all that. I'll do, hold this down, press C. Now I'll hold the key down again and press V. And there we go, yeah, so it just pasted it in there. So if I select that, copy and paste, there we go. It is a dedicated copy and paste keyboard. Now also reading the uh, instructions a bit, it looks like that you can actually do some stuff with RGB. So you can see here that like the RGB underscore mod and RGB underscore tog. So it'd be like RGB toggling. So you can actually set this up to be able to turn on and off RGB and a bunch of other things too. For this page for the QMK firmware is extremely customizable, probably beyond what most people would actually use it for, but it is kind of cool that it has that functionality. So tell me down in the comment section below if you're going to go ahead and buy one of these, or if you already did buy one and if you would actually use it. I'll give one of these away on the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.